Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Well, today's video even surprises me. Well, kinda, sorta. Um, I now have as my daily driver Linux Mint 19.2 with the Cinnamon desktop. And so I want to talk about how I was able to overcome, with a few minor tweaks, overcome my disdain for the Cinnamon desktop. And also I want to talk about why Linux Mint, in particular the Cinnamon desktop, I think should still be on the number one list for a new Linux user. So if you followed the channel over the last couple of years, you probably know that I have never been a huge fan of the Cinnamon desktop. And there were only a few areas where things really bothered me. Uh, and in particular, a few things, very surface level, minor things that bothered me with Linux Mint. One was the theming, the green theming. The other was the Cinnamon launcher. And so I have taken care of most of that with some very, very simple tweaks. And really surprisingly, I'd never spent enough time um, making adjustments with the Cinnamon Launcher, and this is by no means how it normally looks. Uh, so I wanna talk about the changes I made to turn the Cinnamon desktop, especially with 19.2 being so very snappy, um, how I was able to turn it into a desktop that I really, really enjoy. So first up is the launcher, as we've just dis discussed. Um, you can tell this is not the standard logo. However, if you right click on configure, I'm going to toggle that off. Right here we've got an option, use a custom icon and label. Uh, with that turned off, you've got this lovely, no I, I'm kidding, I can't stand it, oddly shaped Linux Mint logo. Now there's probably somebody watching right now who looks at this and just thinks it's absolutely beautiful but I'm not one of them, so we're gonna to toggle that off. And when you do that, you get a default icon here that looks like a circle with a mountain inside of it. And that's kind of what it looks like to me, which as far as I'm concerned is perfectly fine, but if you wanted to go in and choose other icons, you can certainly do so. But for now, we'll leave that there. And then if you're coming from say, I don't know, Windows, uh, you could type in start and really fill it home there. Um, I prefer for that to just be blank. And so that's one tweak. And then the other, and this is, I think, where I miss some things, is under menu. You've got some tweaks under menu. And one of the things that I did was I turned off these category icons. That way you don't have two rows of icons. So I'm going to toggle that back on. And then we'll take a look here. And you'll see now two rows of icons. And to me that looked a little cluttered. So we're going to take that back off. And then the other thing that I did was um, turned off show favorites and session buttons. So we'll turn that back on. And when you do, you see this row here. And one of the things about this row is it just has always seemed kind of out of place to me. Again, personal preference. And it also makes the launcher very wide. So I was thrilled to discover that you could turn that off and then I also turned off show bookmarks and places. So when you do that, just a few tweaks there and I guess I had overlooked the menu configuration options and um, again didn't spend a whole lot of time with Cinnamon uh, but glad to know about that now. So when, when you do that now you'll notice it's a little taller than it was earlier if you go back to the beginning of the video and the reason for that is that when you toggle on the session buttons and the favorites, it's going to stretch this panel up. And then when you log out and log back in, this will shrink down to size and be a very neat, clean, and compact looking launcher. So that took care of one of my issues with Cinnamon Desktop. The other issue uh, that you face when you turn off your session controls and your favorites, well, power down. So that's done with an applet uh, and that's one of the things about the Cinnamon desktop is there are applets you can apply to the panel you see here on the bottom. You simply go in and choose applets and you'll see shut down menu with icons here. That was not listed by default. You actually go into downloads and can download various applets with shut down menu being one of them. Um, it's hit and miss here with some of the applets. Even though there's a rating system, you may find that because of recent updates to Linux Mint that some of these applets just don't work well. 
So it is hit and miss there. Nevertheless, shutdown menu with icons works just fine. And some of the applets have configuration buttons, you'll see here. So we'll go into configure. <clears throat> now, one of the things that you can do is change what is available in your menu pop-up. So, for example, if you wanted, let's see here, uh, to add hibernate to the menu, you could simply toggle that on, and then you'll have some options for the different icons. I had changed this one earlier, just kind of messing around with things. And I probably will not find the original uh, in here, but at any rate, you'll see you've got a whole list of icons where you can go in and tweak things out um, to give it a look more in tune with, you know, the theming and everything that you have going on. So for now, let's see here. I'll just go with this particular icon here, and you'll see that change now uh, as you hover over. So that took care of the shutdown menu just using a simple applet. And most of the applets don't take a tremendous amount of resources or anything like that. And then thirdly, um, and this was, you know, always easy, and that is theming. Um, so we'll go into that. And if you're new to Linux Mint, um, maybe you don't know about this, but I, I would guess most of you watching this are well aware of how easy it is to theme the Cinnamon desktop. So you have themes, add and remove, that's if you want to add additional themes, and then some additional settings for show icons and menus, show icons on buttons, things like that. But we're gonna focus here on themes so you can change, and this is all built in. You don't have to add any of this. Um, you can change your window border, so by default you have three. And then you have uh, a pretty large extensive list, Mint X, Mint Y, and even Breeze icons. And the original color was this um, minty green here. So <laughs> never been my favorite. So uh, I like the aqua, so we switched over to that. Able to go right over to the buttons, same thing. You have light and dark buttons. Two, two options for the mouse pointer, black and white. And then for the desktop overall theme, maybe you like lighter colors, so you could go in and choose that. Now these are all built in. And for me, this combination, which was built in, is really a, a beautiful theme. So we'll take a, a launch here, uh, take a look at uh, Nemo, launch into that, and you'll just see here very clean, crisp, professional looking icons. They don't look cartoonish. That's one of the things I like about the, uh, the Mint Y icons. They're pretty clean. And they just, some of the icons out there have a really kind of an Android cartoonish look to them. Um, so uh, those few tweaks have turned Cinnamon Desktop into really an awesome desktop experience for me, the way I like to work and the way I like to line things up. Now to each his own in Linux, that's why there'll always be tons of videos like this because there are people who can tweak the desktop and change the desktop to look just about any way you can imagine and interact with their OS in a way that really works for them individually. And that's one of the terrific things about Linux. So next up, I want to talk about why Linux Mint should be on the number one list for anyone looking at Linux as their first, maybe their first dive into Linux, should I say. Maybe you're coming from Mac or Windows. So are you one of the people watching this that you know, you're fed up with Windows, you're fed up with updates, updates that break your system. Um, you don't like the intrusion of the OS. Um, you don't like Cortana, perhaps. Maybe you don't know how to turn that off and you're just bothered by it. Or maybe you feel like there are things happening in your operating system that you have no control of, and uh, in particular with Windows. Well, if you're that person, Linux is a fantastic alternative, and Linux Mint is definitely one that you should have on the top of your list. What you're going to find within Linux Mint is a familiar interface um, with a standard traditional launcher, which we talked about earlier on how you can customize that. Maybe you like it just as it is. Maybe you prefer the uh, default. But there are a few other areas, and I want to speak to those uh, briefly that I think will help you along with your quest to find the perfect distro. And really that's what Linux Quest is about. Um, you, you're going to go through a phase, if you will, 
uh, more than likely where you're going to start to experiment with different Linux distros as you first get into Linux to see what works with you. And believe you me, it's a never-ending journey or a never-ending quest, if you will. Um, all right, so one of the areas where I think you'll like what you get within Linux Mint Cinnamon in particular is the right-click menu on applications. So if we go here, you see Add to Panel, which is to add down here uh, in the lower left, like you see Add to Desktop. If you're someone who likes your shortcuts on your desktop, you could add to your favorites, which would then show up over here in the bar if that were still there. Now, one other option that you have when you right click that you get within the Cinnamon desktop, but not say Linux Mint XFCE, for example, is you get an uninstall option. And that's something you're going to be familiar with, especially coming from the Windows side. Now, one of the other areas, other than just the speed and the ease of install, and that's an area that's a biggie for a lot of you, because if you're new into Linux and just getting into this, the process for installing some Linux distros is not as straightforward as others. Some do a particularly good job. Um, not that I have first-hand experience with it, but I hear many people say that Pop! OS is a good alternative uh, to Linux Mint for someone that's new um, because the installer is so very good. But Linux Mint comes to mind, Ubuntu certainly, uh, Manjaro, uh, as far as the installer is concerned, those are all very good simple installers. Now one other area where I want to point out within Linux Mint Cinnamon as opposed to say Linux Mint XFCE and the reason I keep going to back, back to that is that was my daily driver for a long time. And then when you jump over here to Cinnamon you realize there are many things that you, you miss. And one of those that's a pretty big deal is online accounts. So uh, and you'll notice there the speed as you type with which you know this will, will populate and pull up. Now, online accounts, if you're not familiar with that, will give you access to set up quite easily uh, a list of online accounts. Uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, perhaps you've got that Outlook.com account that you want to set up. Now, a big one for me is Microsoft Exchange because my work email is set up through Exchange. And this makes short work of it. I use Evolution as my mail handler on the desktop. And it's kind of one of those things you either like uh, web-based mail and you just stick with that, or maybe you want something on your desktop. And in this case, I go with Evolution. And while it's not beautiful, it is fully functional. And what I mean is, is that if you have an Exchange account and you set up through online accounts within Linux Mint and you've installed Evolution, then you will see sync for your email, your contacts, your calendar events, and your task. And it works very well. So that's going to be an option for many of you. And I know for a lot of people that I've talked to over the years, business accounts through Exchange have been a hurdle. So this will take care of it for you. So this is a pretty big area to consider. The other thing is the... the uh, Nemo file manager, and I'm going to slide this over here. Um, you'll be very familiar with this on the left hand panel here. You can add places or shortcuts. If you have any cloud drives or anything like that set up, I use uh, pCloud. Been very happy with that. Um, you'll see that set up here under devices. Uh, you can resize, um, add, remove, delete. Uh, everything that you're probably used to doing within the Explorer inside of Windows. Now, you don't hear me talking a lot about Mac users. I've never been a Mac user, never been a fan of Mac, uh, the Mac side of things. But uh, I imagine there are many things coming from the Mac side coming over to Linux where you'll benefit as well. So these are just a few of the reasons. The installer, the familiar layout and controls of the OS, and right now, I've got to say the speed, uh, the updates, the improvements within Cinnamon. I've just noticed, for example, Nemo is instantaneous. I mean, I, I can't even, it's like it almost is predicting that I'm going to click and it launches before that. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy fast. Now, this is a brand new system. It's a Core i5 with 12 gigs of RAM and an SSD uh, drive. But I'll tell you that Nemo's even fast on one of my older laptops with 4 gigs of RAM and a slower processor. 
Um, so it's very snappy. So that's another thing that you're going to love. And it's not spying on you in the background. And chances are slim that you're going to wind up with some crazy virus. So there are just a few reasons there to think about jumping on in and making that switch to Linux. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been helpful. I've enjoyed doing it, and we will catch you later.